welcome back to another episode of Get 'Em Greg Fishing. I'm Greg Williams, and today we're fishing out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, on the iconic Spring Made Pier. It's a mid-October day. Temperatures in the mid 50s. Water temperatures in the mid 70s. We're gonna go out here on the pier, see what's biting today. Uh, I've got bait for just about anything from Spanish mackerel to uh, red drum, black drum, uh, whiting, croaker. Uh, we'll see what's biting out there today and uh, we'll put a hook in the water and we'll get them. There you go, get him. There he goes, running. Go, running. running. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him, boy. Get him. Uh, he's caught in that tree. Oh, he got him. Get him, boy. Get him. You know what time it is. The Spring Made Pier can be found at 3200 South Ocean Boulevard in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Spanning a remarkable length of approximately 1,060 feet, this pier is well appointed with an array of conveniences. Visitors can take advantage of benches for relaxation, fish cleaning stations for preparing their catch, bait and tackle shops to stock up on supplies, and even a restaurant for the delectable seaside dining experience. Constructed during the 1950s, Spring Made Pier has an illustrious past. It was an integral component of the Spring Made Beach Resort, a charming retreat fashioned by the Springs family. The Springs were renowned textile manufacturers who established the resort and pier with a unique purpose in mind. Their vision was to create a haven for the hard-working employees of their textile mills, providing them with a vacation destination that offered not only a retreat, but a wealth of recreational opportunities. As I ventured onto the pier, I noticed that it was already bustling with fellow anglers gathered at the furthest reaches of the wooden structure. With caution, I approached a group and inquired if I could claim half of an available bench, fully aware that this was the prime spot for targeting these exclusive bull red drums. I had brought along a stash of frozen bait fish which I had caught a day prior, knowing that they were excellent choice for luring these mighty redfish. To get them ready for action, I decided to thaw them using water from the nearby fish cleaning station. Once defrosted, I cut the bait into sizable chunks and skillfully secured them onto my hooks. With my bait prepared and my anticipation building, I carefully cast my line allowing it to descend to the bottom three feet from the very end of the pier. The voice you hear echoing in the background belongs to a fellow angler who's in pursuit of king mackerel using a live bait that hovers temptingly on the water's surface. Amidst the action, a squadron of seagulls swoops in, their keen eyes fixated on the delectable offer. Our angler, determined to protect his bait, vigorously attempts to shoo away the seagulls, raising his voice in a valiant effort. Regrettably, it seems the seagulls are more enchanted by the prospect of a free meal than they are imitated by his vocal protest. A few moments later. As fate would have it, I had chosen to position my bait closer right. to the pier than the other anglers, who had cast their lines further out in hopes of landing a bull red. It didn't take more than five minutes for my line to produce an exciting outcome. My fishing rod's tip suddenly dipped, sending a clear signal that a substantial fish had taken the bait and was now hooked. Oh, what we got here? What we got here? Cool, good, whatever it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, 
Hey, Anybody got a net? Yeah, drunk here. That's what I come after, right there. Big bull red. That's exactly what I come for. Yeah. Got him. Oh, so nice. wow, that's good, boy. That's a good boy. That's what I came out for, boy, right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, hey, that's a big old joke. He is a nice one. That's what I came for. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, just one book. Yeah, I have two. There's two of them. Probably the, here's the other one right here. Y'all wouldn't mind taking a picture for me, boy. Go ahead. Thank you so much, man. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. In yep. South Carolina, there are specific size limits in place for retaining these red fish. To keep a red drum, it is required that they fall within a range of 15 to 23 inches Ready? in length. Any red drum exceeding this size range must be released. This drum in the video measured oh, approximately off, 40 inches in length, which is well above the limit. Recognizing the importance of preserving breeding fish, we promptly released it back into the water after snapping a quick photo. Like his damn his, his head's pinned right underneath the steel port there. Yeah, there you go. There it is. There it is. Awesome. 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 Thank you, guys. Following a quick rebaiting of my line and lowering it back into the water, I found myself in a familiar situation. Within a mere minute, my rod tip once again bowed dramatically as another robust bull drum seized the bait. However, this time the bull drum had other plans and darted beneath the pier structure rather than out into open water. The ensuing tussle lasted for several intense minutes as I struggled to maintain control over the powerful fish. Unfortunately, the battle took an unexpected turn when the bull drum managed to wrap itself around one of the pier's support columns resulting in a frustrating break-off. As I dealt with this setback, I observed that most of the anglers in my vicinity adopted the strategy I had been employing all along, reeling in their bait and redeploying it just a few feet from the pier's edge. Come on, baby. See what we got, see what we got. Oh, another one, another one, another red. Yes. Yeah. They are here today, boys. The reds are here today. Hey, he's over here. Oh well, I got to see him at least. Woo. Oh yeah, it was. Hey, you got something right there, right there. I don't know. 
You still got it? You saw him already? No, I figure that's what it is. Hey, Roger, Roger watch this pole right here. It might be ready on Bring the fuck back. All right, come on. It's time for Get 'em Greg's Tackle Box, a segment dedicated to showcasing our fishing tackle selections, accompanied by valuable tips, techniques, and instructional insights based on today's episode. We've chosen a Pin Pursuit 4 6 foot 6 inch medium heavy rod paired with a 6000 Pin Pursuit reel. Our reel is spooled with 80 pound reaction tackle braid topped off with a 100 pound monofilament leader. To securely join these two lines we're utilizing an Alberto knot. To tie this knot begin by creating a loop at the end of your 100 pound leader. Next thread the 80 pound braided line through this loop. Wrap the braided line around the monofilament 10 times then wrap it back towards your loop another 10 times. Afterwards, pass the line through the loop and tighten the knot by firmly pulling both lines with as much force as possible. Once you've tightened your knot, simply clip the tag ends off and you're done. As previously mentioned, we're utilizing a double drop bottom rig with 7 aught circle hooks attached. If you're interested in learning how to create these bottom rigs, you can access the instructional video by clicking on the link in the upper right hand corner of this video or by checking our comment section for a cost effective DIY tutorial. When threading your hook through your bait, ensure that the bait's scales do not get caught on the end of your hook, as demonstrated in this video. Failing to remove the scales increases the risk of your hook not properly penetrating the fish's mouth. Now that we've reconfigured our rigs and got our bait ready, let's dive back into fishing. To recap, I'd barely been on the pier for about five minutes when I successfully landed my first redfish. After releasing it back into the water, I immediately hooked into another one, but unfortunately it managed to break my line. After reattaching my rigs and getting my bait back in the water, I took a few moments to set up my second rod and reel. This particular setup is a bit longer than the one I'm using for the red drums. It's a 12 foot rod typically employed for Spanish mackerel fishing. I tied a double drop rig directly to the main line using the same method as detailed in the Get 'em Greg Tackle Box segment. The only difference this time is I used a 20 pound main line instead of the hefty 100 pound line 
and I've opted for two alt circle hooks paired with shrimp flavored fish bites to track the smaller fish. This setup turned out to be quite effective as I spent the next few hours reeling in dozens of sea trout, which are also known as wheat fish. However, it's important to note that regulations permit keeping only one of these fish, so all the others gently was returned to the ocean to continue their journey and thrive for another day. I had a big, yeah, I lay a big wheat fish and then something shark, shark then grabbed it there, boy. Whoo, look at that. Chopped it right in half. Yeah, you had a good one. Yeah, it was pulling harder. Yeah, there he is. Nice. Nice. All right. Oh. There we go. There we go. Got him now. Uh, the other hook in the the about the Good deal. Here you go, bud. Nice job. Nice catch. <laughs> Uh-oh, something done got a hold of this one too. Something big done got a hold of this one too. Oh yeah, come on baby. Look at that. Y'all see that jump? Got a shark on it. Yeah, it's a shark, I think. It's pulling me, boy. Oh yeah. Shark fishing now, but not really. He ain't squirting for it, man. This is a shark. What we got? Come on. What we got here? Come on. Had both rods hooked up. What we got here? What we got here? Don't go over there. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. He's gonna bust my arm. What is it? Hold this pole and let him break. Let's see if I can get a picture of it real quick. There you go. Yeah, go ahead and cut it for me. Oh. Oh, 
Appreciate it. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. See if we can pull this other one in. I had something, had something on this one. Except they're still on me. Yeah. Doubled up. They still got. Still got on. Finish really this one. We got two on it and doubled up here. Right, there you go, bud. There you go. Nice. Two at a time. What? What's up? Been catching a lot of trout. You can only keep one. Spanish is starting to come through again, so we're going to see if we can't transition and uh, catch, us, catch us a few. Uh, Spanish mackerel. Getting eat up with sharks, it's been busting me off. Three of my rigs. On my one I'm trying to go after the bull rigs with. So we're we'll transition to this for a while. See if we can't pull in some Spanish mackerel. What I'm using here is a call a straw rig. It's basically a rig that just has a series of hooks with straws on um, them. Normally, uh, anywhere from six, six, seven uh, hooks in each one of these things. Shit. This little foam cold needle kind of keep it keep it from getting all tangled up on as you got it in the tackle box or whatnot. So let's see if, what we can do with this for a little while. If we can't get catch something. What began initially as an overcast day turned into an absolute delight as the sun broke through the clouds, casting a warm glow over the scene. It was precisely at this moment that the Spanish mackerel decided it was time to make their presence known. During their fall migration, these fish journey southward, avidly pursuing bait as their compass. To increase your odds of a successful catch, position yourself on the northern side of the pier is key. Personally, I've had the most success by staking my spot as close to the northern end of the pier as possible. Regrettably, all the prime fishing spots had already been claimed on that busy day. Nevertheless, I made most of my situation by securing the nearest available spot. To compensate for not having the ideal position, I cast my line out as far as my arm would allow, then skillfully worked it back by jigging. Making the task even more manageable was the rod holder I used, known as a rod rocker. This nifty tool simplified the repetitive up and down motion of the lure, which can be quite taxing even for the most seasoned of anglers. Another one up. This one's definitely too small.
had an awesome day today fishing off the Spring Made Pier. Uh, light was on from the time I got my first line in the water to the time I left. Um, had a bunch of different fish biting today. We had black drum biting, red drum biting. I saw some flounder, croakers, uh, Spanish mackerel, uh, wheat fish. Uh, awesome time to bring some kids out on the pier. Uh, you know, like I said, the bike was on all day long. Uh, it'd be an awesome time to bring some kids and have a great time. Uh, until next time, catch you later. Before you leave, be sure to check out our description page below. This page gives you a brief description of the video you are currently watching along with the fishing gear we use during the filming of this video. Click on to the Show More link to view all of this information. In upcoming episodes, we'll begin a new segment where we test out products that are sent to us. If you would like your product to be featured on one of our upcoming episodes, our contact and shipping information is also included on this page. I want to thank you for watching our videos, and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel to get notifications as to when our new videos are available. Meanwhile, here are a few more videos that I think you will like.